Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons was unbelievable in this basketball game. 34 points, 12 assists, 12 rebounds, 5 steals. Oh, by the way, a couple blocks and 10 of 14 from the free throw line. He was absurd. That is why I defend him so much. That is why I always say that he has the potential to be special. Because that performance was special. He took over the game. He was sick in the third quarter. He was the big man, and I understand that that will now be a conversation because he was so effective as the screener and someone who's rolling to the basket. That is now going to be the new conversation. What is his role, and is he a point guard? And he looks so good as a five or as a bigger man out there. That will be the new conversation, but here's what I'm telling you. He impacted the game on both sides at such an elite level. It was so entertaining to watch. He played 42 minutes. This guy is always consistently playing minutes at that rate. 30 plus in the high 30s. He'll touch the 40s and he's always going. The motor is always constant. He's always bringing it defensively. Now sometimes offensively it gets gets stagnant and things don't move around as well but he's always bringing it on the defensive side after playing high 30 minutes every single night. It's remarkable. So the lineup in the third quarter that was really sparking this team, it was Raul Neto, which was an awful game by him, to be honest with you, Furkan Korkmaz, Matisse Theibel, Mike Scott, and Ben Simmons playing the five. So for that lineup to be the one that was getting the team going, it's pretty funny because what? Huh? Are you kidding me? Now, there's plenty to talk about when it comes to this basketball game. But before we do, I need to let you know about my sponsor, SeatGeek. Are you looking to buy tickets for a Sixers game, Flyers game, or any game out there, or even a concert? If you use SeatGeek, and if you use the promo code BRODES at their checkout page, you will receive 20 bucks off. That's free parking, or beer, or food. It's a no-brainer to use the promo code BRODES today. Ben and Matisse on the defensive side, it was crazy. They recorded 12 total steals as a team. Both of them combined nine. So Matisse had four, Ben had five. They were in everyone's grill, disrupting all the possessions. They were moving their feet quickly. The Nets had no answers when they were willing to defend, of course. It wasn't that way the whole game. The pick and rolls, the Nets were scoring on easily. They were attacking the basket easily at times. Early in the game, it was a mess, and the Sixers were down double digits. But once they were willing to defend, it's almost impossible for another team to score at a high level, to score at a high rate, to get buckets at will. It won't happen, not on this team. Matisse Theibel is nuts. He's flat out nuts when it comes to defense, saving balls out of bounds, coming out of nowhere, full speed, and attacking a defender, getting in inside his grill and being annoying. I would have never assumed it would be to this degree so quickly. We knew Matisse Theibel was a good defender coming out of college. But like this, swarming guys, being this effective? Wow. So, down the stretch, this game was ridiculous. A ton of players stepped up, everyone seemed to be dialed in on the defensive side, and even Al Horford made big buckets. Yeah, that's right, Uncle Al, the guy who has been struggling, the guy who everyone is brutally destroying because he's not living up to his contract, and I understand he's not living up to his contract, but I stated yesterday in a conversation I had about liking Elton Brand's aggressiveness as general manager, I don't think Al Horford just stopped playing good basketball as if he forgot how to play basketball and his age factored in so quickly from last year to this year. He's just struggling and he's trying to find a way to work with this new crew. He was great in this one, late in the fourth, making plays. So let's talk about this stretch. With 324 to go, the score was 105-104 Sixers, and the Nets were on a surge. They were actually scoring buckets then. Al Horford with a big rejection and 
pinned it against the glass. Then Ben Simmons on the next defensive possession gets a big stop, gets a rebound. It leads to a Tobias Harris wide open three who bricks the shot. No good. Matisse Thibault on the other end. Tough defense and forces the Nets to step out of bounds because he's so active and moving his feet so quickly. Sixers ball once again. Tobias Harris then on the defensive side gets a block. Leads to an Al Horford three. Horford gets a block. Horford gets a bucket. Korkmaz gets a three. And he shot two of ten leading up to that point. But he answered the bell with a big three-pointer late in the game in a crucial moment. So not his best shooting performance. But it was a big moment and he delivered the shot. And I keep it 100. I look at plus minus. He was plus 16. He was plus 16, which was the best on the team. He played just over 20 minutes or so. So not the best shooting performance. Came up big with a late three. And he also had the best plus minus on the team. And I value plus minus. But the Nets did respond with a huge three of their own. What was it? A 50-footer or something? So it was still a close game. Josh Richardson ends up hitting some free throws, and Ben Simmons gets a block to end it. So what I'm trying to tell you is, defensively, from the 324 mark on, blocks, 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 causing turnovers. Yeah, the Sixers brought the energy. Yeah, the Sixers can do some damage. And oh, by the way, if you didn't know, and if you didn't remember, the Sixers still have Joel Embiid, who is the best rim protector they have, and who is one of the best defenders they have, on top of what the guys I'm telling you about right now. They are so good at defense. Ben Simmons and Matisse Thibel. Joel Embiid is such a huge contributor to the defensive side, just as important as those guys. So it's a scary sight. It's a scary thing to think about what they are going to be capable of doing when it matters. It's funny, though, because the Nets came into the Wells Fargo Center just a couple games ago, and it was a similar story. When it came down to the fourth quarter, when it came down to meaningful minutes, the Sixers turned it on. They were aggressive. They were pests. And they did what they needed to do on the defensive side of the floor, and that won the Sixers the basketball game. So it's just ironic that it happened again just a few games later against the same team. This time, though, no Kyrie Irving. And Kyrie Irving right now, I don't, I don't understand what's going on with him. What he's saying to the media about his team and the direction of the organization and him needing help. And I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about Kyrie Irving. It's so odd because he has the skill set, but he goes through... Great times in Cleveland when he was with LeBron, right? And he hits the big-time shot and he wins the title. LeBron leaves. Everything goes to shambles in Cleveland because LeBron James is one of the greatest players ever to play the game of basketball. And every time he leaves an organization, they become a dumpster fire. He goes to Boston. That was a nightmare. And now he's in Brooklyn. And I understand once Kevin Durant comes back, back and he, when he returns next season the Nets will be a totally different squad but what what is going on with his energy and his attitude towards the media and towards the fan base and towards the NBA as a whole and the NBA fans it's not a good look I'll tell you that for free and when you look at the Nets they're winning games without him not this one specifically but as a whole they're winning games without him and they're losing games with him and he's a very ball dominant guy he needs the ball in his hands yeah, that's enough Kyrie Irving talk. Who the hell cares about them? No one cares about where the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving are going as a whole. But when it comes to this game, if I'm going to keep it on the Brooklyn Nets, TLC knocking down shots, and and who's this cat Claxton dropping 15 points and, and fouling Ben Simmons hard multiple times? The first time even looked somewhat, not dirty, but a little on the aggressive side. As Claxton was falling down, he brought Ben Simmons down with him but tried to play it off like he was trying to hold Ben Simmons and not foul him hard. Then the second one, it was a straight slap in the head, and Claxton ends up what knocking himself out out on the hardwood and just lays there on the ground. But how does he get 15 points? It was halfway through the game. The Sixers were down double digits. And, and I'm questioning if we are going to lose a game because the Brooklyn Nets have TLC, Timothy Lawawu Cabarro, and 
Claxton scoring all the points. Normally, we see Spencer Dinwiddie drop 75 points at halftime on this team. He had some buckets, no doubt about it, but it wasn't a Spencer Dinwiddie drop 89 points on the Sixers type game that we normally see. He got some buckets, he got some points, but it wasn't the same effect. It didn't have the same vibe to it as it normally does when Spencer Dinwiddie matches up against Philadelphia. So let's get back to Uncle Al. 9 of 15, 19 points. He was a crucial part of this win. There are times where defensively you see him being a little bit on the slower side, and I I comprehend that. I do. But I don't believe he just forgot how to play basketball. When it comes to Tobias Harris and Josh Richardson in this game, they both had 15 points. I give them eh games Early first quarter, Tobias Harris drilling threes. It was nice. He cooled off in the second quarter. He missed some shots in the second half. I didn't like a few times he tried to take it to the basket and go hard to the rim, but one of those, it was a four-on-two, and that's what he decided to go with. I hated that. And then there was another one where he short-armed it. He kept the ball close to his body and tried to go up with it as well in traffic, and that did not end well at all. So I didn't like a couple of Tobias Harris's takes all around eh, games for both of them. They, They did not stand out to me and it wasn't as if I was happy with the outcome of their games. But I sure was with Ben Simmons. That is why I feel the way that I do about Ben. Does he do this every single night? No, he doesn't. And that's why we get annoyed. That's why we get frustrated. But we have a player on this roster that is capable of doing that. He's capable of doing it. He's had great performances. He can do this. That's why I don't want to trade him for D'Angelo Russell. Do you see what Ben Simmons did? Did you see what he did? And not just the 34, 12, and 12. I'm talking more about the five. That's right, the five steals. The couple blocks. I praise his defense more than anything, and he does so many things well. He sees the floor well, the way he he moves the ball. You do know that he's leading the league in assists that are three-pointers. We're talking about a team that statistically doesn't even shoot the three ball at a high rate. He leads the league in those assists. That's very powerful. That's very big when you look at the Sixers and you realize that they're not a high-powered three-point shooting team. So he's a great passer. He's great downhill. When he puts his shoulders down and he goes to the basket, it's unbelievable. It's hard to stop. How about that baby hook off the glass he was using today? I love that. It hits the top of the glass. Bang goes right in. Using that baby hook. He does so many things well. And my favorite, the defensive side of the ball. The defense. The defense. He guards every position and every position so, so well. That's so rare. 34, 12, 12, and 5. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, there was one lineup in this game that I despised out of Brett Brown, and there's a few times that he has run this lineup, something similar to it, and I can't stand it. It's pretty much Josh Richardson and the bench. It was Raul Neto, Josh Richardson, Furkan Korkmaz, Mike Scott, and Kyle O'Quinn. I can't stand when he does that lineup. It's bad. It's not good, and it wasn't effective. And the Nets actually went on a push when that lineup was out. Howell Neto was awful in this basketball game. In that third quarter, him and Ben had a couple passes. But all around, Howell Neto was not good. And it's starting to irritate me. And it's time to give Trey Burke another shot. I don't like this Howell Neto thing. Let's go to the bench real quick. Because the bench was very unique. Because Norvell Pell only has one day left to be up with the big team. They went with Jonah Bolden. Jonah Bolden in nine minutes had four personal fouls. So it it was not his greatest performance. And it's not like he gets a ton of chances. 
But because of the Norvell Pell thing, he might get more chances moving forward. Kyle O'Quinn played some minutes as well. He actually knocked down a three-pointer. But those guys... Al Horford had two, uh, he had three personal fouls. Kyle O'Quinn had two personal fouls. And then Jonah Bowden had four. So the big man and the big man rotation, they were all sorts of... They were in all sorts of problems and in all sorts of foul trouble during the early part of the game. So it led Brett Brown to throw out Jonah Bolden and throw out these different players. You might see more of them. Maybe they're trying to use it as trade bait because they know they're trying to go out and get another bench player. So maybe if they use Jonah Bolden and he's capable of making some shots and if he's capable of making some noise, another team would be somewhat interested and at least entertained by his name. Maybe they're trying to get him to play well to move him for another piece. I don't know. But they don't really have any other options to play the five. You can't do Mike Scott at the five like we did last year. And speaking of Mike Scott, he dropped two three-pointers. Are you kidding me? My jaw hit the floor when I saw Mike Scott deliver a three-bomb and, and run down the other side of the floor. Mike Scott producing points off the bench. I don't even remember the last time he hit a three in a meaningful minute before this game. And he hit two of them? We need Mike Scott. Mike Scott not performing is truthfully killing this team. And it's not talked about enough. We just keep saying, oh, Mike Scott, he's unplayable. He's unplayable. He's unplayable. It's killing the team because he should be a piece that you can trust coming off the bench, a sixth guy, a seventh guy. He hasn't been that. He needs to be holding himself accountable. And he needs to at least be doing this, at least be knocking down two threes a game. Give us that. You got to give us that because it's been awful out of him. And him being serviceable, it changes where we are when it comes to this bench. It does. Now, the the Sixers play Toronto coming up next. That game's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see how they perform. No Joel Embiid is brutal. It really is. But they're playing with some mojo right now. They're, They're playing games and they're winning games. They're not dominating for a full 48 minutes, but when they are turning it on, they are dominating because that defense was crazy. And for some reason, though, the Toronto Raptors seem to give this Sixers team a ton of trouble. They play a good game. They match up well against the Sixers. And without Joel Embiid, it's it's a totally different story. So I'm very interested to see how the Sixers come out and play in that one. I'm already anticipating it. How is Ben Simmons going to do? Will Ben Simmons play the five at any point during that game? Will he be matched up against a Marcus Gasol? Will he play five when Marcus Gasol ends up going to the bench? How will Brett Brown utilize things? Is he going to play that horrendous lineup against the Toronto Raptors? Please no. Please no. Because they will get abused. They couldn't score. Not only could they not score, they couldn't defend. That lineup was making my eyes bleed. We can't do that again. We just can't do it again. And I know we will. That's the thing. I know the Sixers will. But I've seen it a couple times now, and it has to change. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. When I look at this game from a few steps back, I'm really proud of Ben Simmons. Now, I think he has been hearing the noise because when he hears the noise and it snowballs into a big snowball, he normally breaks that snowball up and smashes it and does something because he hears the critics. There's critics every single day with him, but once the critics hit a certain level, then he responds. He's been hearing the noise about the fourth quarter. He's been hearing the noise about the second half and how he only explodes in the first half. I know he has because that's just who he is. I've seen it many, many times now where he answers the critics once it gets to a certain point. So he's been hearing it and then he decides, okay, I'm going to show everyone up. I'm going to prove everyone wrong. And he decided to. And he did. So please do it again, Ben. Please. That's all I ask of you. Do it again. Remarkable performance, though. Unreal when it comes to that ending. And I was screaming, screaming at the top of my lungs down that four-minute stretch in the fourth quarter. Going crazy. Block, 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 block. 
But we were not answering the bell really on the other side until Al Horford made a three, until Al Horford made a big bucket. And then Corky with the three. But we weren't responding, and there were some good open looks as well, so I was concerned because I knew that they were bringing it to the defensive side, but they were not executing offensively. They were good looks. They just weren't scoring. Crazy. And I actually like the afternoon game, a 3 o'clock game. There's a ton of NBA games on the schedule today, but I, I loved it. I loved the afternoon tilt. Put the recliner up, had the dog next to me, light outside. I had the I had the windows not open, not the windows open, but the blinds open so it was light outside. It's not hot, but it was at least, you know, daytime and got the Sixers on. You hear Mark Zumoff going. The game comes down to the wire. It was a very interesting game. I was very intrigued. I was into it. I was involved. Now, I like the fact that 7 o'clock games are also on, too. Like, I like the fact when games are on at 7 because it gives me something to do at night. But there's still some good NBA games on the schedule to watch. But it's nice to throw in an afternoon tilt. Absolutely. So let me know your thoughts down below on this game. On Ben Simmons, Matisse Thibel, Al Horford, Furkan. Shot 3 of 10. Not the best shooting performance, but came up with a big one. And he was also the best plus minus on the team. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.